Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossland's Community Church online service. We're so thankful that you're watching today, and I'm just going to pray and get us started. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day and for everything that you have given to us today, Lord. We just pray that you continually guide us and lead us where, wherever you need us, Lord Jesus. We want your will to be done. And we just pray that as we come into worship you today, Lord Jesus, that you guide our hearts. It's in your name we pray, Lord. Amen. And with that, let's get started with our worship. Oh, 
Hello. We're continuing our series based on Hebrews chapter 11 and this week we're looking at Jacob. Sometimes the Bible identifies our God as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to distinguish him from false gods. So as we look at Jacob today, I pray that we would encounter the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in a fresh way. Jacob was a colourful character. Here are some aspects of his life Bradley and I are going to briefly look at today. Here are our themes. Appointed before birth. Strategic opportunist negotiator. Wrestling with God. A vision of a ladder into heaven. Worshipping and blessing at the end of his life. The crooked made straight. The deceiver is deceived and deceptive lying performer. And Bradley is going to start with a concept that Jacob's life was appointed before his birth. So one of the first things that I really enjoy about Jacob that we're talking about today is just the circumstances of his birth and of his name as it goes. It's prophesied before that uh, Jacob and Esau are born that uh, the older will serve the younger. Jacob obviously being the younger after the birth. The name of Jacob has some great importance to me I think. And it comes when it says, the name Jacob, Hebrew, Jacob, sounds like the Hebrew words for heel and deceiver, from, he from Hebrew, Akeb. The name was originally positive, meaning protect, like a rear guard, but it took the negative meaning of heel grabber or deceiver in the context of Jacob's deceptive, grasping, and usurping character. Jacob is a strategic opportunist and negotiator. We see in Jacob someone who is not happy to settle for second place and he goes to great lengths to secure the birthright of his older brother and to steal the superior blessing that was also due to go to his older brother. One time when his brother is very hungry, Jacob refuses to give him some food until he swears on oath to give him his birthright. So Esau sells this huge honour to his brother for a single meal. A very weak and foolish transaction on Esau's part, and this transaction displeased God. But it shows that Jacob is concerned about his future, his long-term well-being and security, whereas Esau seems more concerned with instant gratification. There's a challenge here for us. Do we have a long-term focus, or are we controlled by instant gratification? Deceptive Lying Performer The story of how Jacob stole his brother's blessing is shocking, especially as he was stealing a blessing that involves the name of God. You can read about this in Genesis chapter 27. Through a calculated performance of lies and disguise, Jacob tricked his father into thinking he was Esau and to proclaim the beautiful blessing over him, a blessing that his actions didn't deserve. However, the blessing was so real and holistic that over the years that followed, Jacob was greatly blessed. But he was also forced to face up to his deceptive actions and he received a good dose of his own medicine. Psalm 103 says that God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, but he does over time make us face up to the things that need to change in our lives. This enables us to forgive people and let go of stuff because we can be assured that in his timing, God will make the person who hurt us face up to what they have done. On different levels, we sometimes perform to get through certain situations, presenting something on the outside that isn't entirely true. Church can certainly be a place where we present what we think people want to see. However, God wants us to be authentic and over time his love removes the need for us to perform to be accepted. One of the biggest things for me in the life of Jacob is when he wrestles with God. We look at this great moment and not even just symbolically, Jacob is wrestling physically with God in this cave and they're going back and forth. At one point, Jacob gets his hip dislocated it's a really intense moment, and at the end, Jacob won't let go until God blesses him and gets his name changed to Israel. And there's so much beauty in the fact that Jacob never gives up on wrestling with God. He never gives up on 
the fact that he wants to so badly to be close with him, but he wrestles with his own nature to become closer to him. The deceiver is deceived. Jacob, on two occasions in his life, was significantly tricked and deceived by people. Firstly, by his father-in-law, who gave him the wrong daughter on his wedding day. And secondly, by his own sons, who deliberately led him to believe that his favourite son, Joseph, was dead. There's a real sense of natural justice here and of reaping what you sow. I wonder if perhaps you're struggling with a difficult situation in your life at the moment. Could it be that God is making you face up to something that you have done to someone else for which you need to seek his forgiveness and healing? I need to say that this may not be the case at all uh, and probably isn't the case. But if you're grappling with something, talk to God about it and ask him for wisdom and what he may want to show you through this situation. The concept of do unto others as you'd have them do unto you works both ways. Vision of a ladder into heaven. Because of Jacob's deceptive methods, he had to flee from his brother. On the way, he stops to rest and sleep, and during the night, God speaks to him in a dream and reaffirms the promises and blessings to Jacob that he'd given to Abraham. Genesis 28, 10 to 15 says... Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. No longer is this a second-hand blessing and set of promises passed on to Jacob from his father. Jacob has had his own personal encounter with God and starts his own relationship with him. The challenge to us is, is my relationship with God second-hand or have I had my own personal encounter with him? Don't feel bad if you think your relationship with God is second-hand. Ask God to speak to you in some way that personally connects you to him. I'm sure if you rummage around in your Bible, he will talk to you. Another beautiful point to look at in the life of Jacob is just the end of his life and everything that leads up to his death, to his worshipping. He is this amazing moments of worship and blessings over his sons and the sons of his son uh, Joseph, his grandsons, blessing Ephraim and blessing Judah, even though they're not the firstborn, they're the in Ephraim's case, the second born, and in Judah's case, the last born of Leah. There's just a beautiful tie change in the honor. God makes, or Jacob gives blessings that fit, just like God gives us blessings that fit. Jacob wanted to give blessings that fit each one of his children because they were all individuals, just the way God sees us all as individuals. In Hebrews 11, uh, chap, uh, in Hebrews 11, verse 21, says, By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. And by faith, Jacob continually, day in, day out, until his death, was blessing others and worshipping God. Crooked made straight. Isaiah prophesied that before the Messiah came, someone would prepare the way for him. And here are his words from Luke chapter 3, verse 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked way shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth and all humanity will see God's salvation. 
Jacob is an inspiring picture of someone who was crooked being made straight, someone who journeyed with God and who was changed from someone who deceived to someone who was full of truth, worship and blessing. He passed on a clear blessing to each of his children that showed he knew them all as unique individuals. Jacob was also reconciled with his brother Esau during his lifetime. Esau was also blessed, but his family tree is no more. However, Jacob's family are still here. His family and his new name Israel live on. God is a faithful God who keeps his promises. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we're just praying that you have a great rest of your day. And with that, let's say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Take care.